Welcome to Friday, everyone. I'm meteorologist Andrew Humphrey. Scattered snow has returned for this afternoon and this evening. But what about your weekend? Are we talking about weekend snow? I've got your full forecast straight ahead. Paula Tutman with us live this afternoon. Hello, Paula. Hey, Andrew, take a look at this. I think you would love this. Take a look at this mural. And this is only half of it. And they sure could use your help painting. Seems like a great activity for you and the kids. I'll show you how you can get involved. Also first at four, high-powered meeting. President Trump welcomes his first foreign leader, talks about torture, and gets a royal invitation. Up first, sewage concerns in Macomb County. A live update on that big sinkhole repair and what comes next. First at four starts now. Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News First at Four starts now. Good afternoon. I'm Karen Drew. First at four, it is a very delicate balancing act in Fraser as county crews try to avoid any more sewage going into the Clinton River. Residents in 11 communities are being asked to help. Local 4's Priya Mann got an update this afternoon on the sinkhole repair. So Priya, what's next and what are the risks when it comes to sewage overflow? Well, Karen, all that sewage would have nowhere to go but the Clinton River and ultimately Lake St. Clair. And that's why Macomb County officials are asking people to restrict their water use at the same time, hoping there isn't a major weather event. In a rare move, Macomb County Public Works Commissioner Candace Miller met with the elected officials of all 11 communities affected by the Fraser sinkhole. After sediment plugged the collapsed sewer line yesterday, residents have been asked to restrict their water use. And that could last for another month until the temporary bypass pipe is completed. Mother Nature, meanwhile, poses a serious problem. The interceptor here could not handle a serious weather event. Half a dozen pumping stations are on standby in case there is an overflow to prevent sewage from pumping into people's basements. Homeowners are being asked to use biodegradable paper products, restrict dishwash and laundry loads and other means to restrict the impact here. The best I can tell them is it is what it is. It's happened. We are going to fix it. We are going to resolve it and uh, we would just ask for their patience and ask them to assist us because we're all in it together. Now coming up at five o'clock with so many elected officials in one place, I asked them why should homeowners and taxpayers trust you? That may have raised a few eyebrows, but Public Works Commissioner Candace Miller gave a very frank answer as to why she believes the process here will be different than in years past. That will be coming up at five o'clock. Reporting live from Frazier, I'm Priya Mann, Local 4. All right, look forward to that report. Thank you, Priya. Two men charged with killing and burning a West Bloomfield mother are in court this afternoon. 31-year-old Diana Pesserell's body was found in a burning car back in December. Today, the medical examiner revealed the body was discovered inside her trunk. Investigators believe Pesserell was sitting in her car when 18-year-old Deshaun Smith killed her. 19-year-old Jalen Stringer is accused of helping Smith cover up the crime. Today's hearing will determine if the two will stand trial. Detroit City Clerk Janice Winfrey says improvements are coming to city polling places. During a news conference today, Winfrey confirmed there was no voter fraud during the presidential election, but she admitted improvements are needed after complaints about machines that broke and other issues in November. So the city is buying 700 new voting machines. Those machines will cost $82 million. The city has to pay $1.6 million of that tab. The rest of the cost will be covered by Wayne County and the state. The city is also going to start training poll workers quarterly instead of yearly. Detroit Mayor Mike Duggan helped open up a new era at the Colony Arms apartment building on East Jefferson today. After some renovations, the Colony Arms will now be called River Crest Apartments and will provide affordable housing to Detroit residents. Time now for our first look at the forecast as we start to enter the weekend. Andrew Humphrey is in for Ben Bailey. What do you have? Well, Karen, still looking and feeling like uh, winter out there with scattered snow showers around for this afternoon. You got this bigger batch up here, a little bit more slippery, or in fact, a lot more slippery in Genesee and in La Lapeer County, while the snow is a lot more scattered right here in the Motor City. Although it's scattered, it still provides slipperiness on roadways and sidewalks. So be careful uh, driving and walking for this afternoon and this evening. 
temperatures at or below freezing. The only highest temperature we're seeing in our four zones right now, Monroe at 32, while it's 29 in Ann Arbor, 31 at Metro Airport, and temperatures stay right around this mark, with more snow showers as we go through dinner time. Now, later on tonight, some of those may diminish after midnight, but what's on tap for this weekend? A return of more snowflakes? I've got the answer to that, and your seven-day forecast coming up. All right, thank you, Andrew. Today, President Trump welcomed his first foreign leader to the White House as the United Kingdom's Prime Minister, Theresa May, visited. Devin joins us from the newsroom. So, Devin, do we know what the two discussed? Uh, well, we, uh, the, the two held a very brief news conference, so not a whole lot to go on from that, uh, Karen. It only included, in fact, four questions from the American and British journalists that were assembled there. Uh, but the two were asked about uh, Russian sanctions, torture, future of NATO, the Brexit, and about the current state of U.S.-Mexico relations. They were mostly complimentary of each other, with the Prime Minister saying that she and President Trump are fully committed to NATO. When it came to sanctions against Russia, the President wouldn't say whether he supports lifting the sanctions. He also said when it comes to torture, he's going to let Defense Secretary James Mattis, uh, quote, override his own views. Has stated publicly that he does not necessarily believe in torture or waterboarding or however you want to define it. Enhanced interrogation, I guess, would be a word that a lot of words that a lot of people would like to use. Um, I don't necessarily agree, but I would tell you that he will override because I'm giving him that power. Prime Minister May also reported the president has accepted a state visit invitation from the Queen and, in fact, will visit the U.K. Uh, later this year. Now, back to Mexico. As for where things stand there, the president said he did speak with President Peña Nieto on the phone for nearly an hour. Now, he didn't go into details on what the two talked about, but he described the call as friendly. Karen, back to you. All right. Thank you, Devin. Mm -hmm. First at four, we're on top of stories making headlines all around the world on your Friday afternoon. We start in Iraq, where the fight against ISIS is making new progress. Today, Iraqi forces raised their flag outside Mosul University. It's a big celebration for the troops trying to retake the city from the terror group. They've now liberated the eastern half of the city and are now pushing into the northern part of that city. They launched the mission back in October. Britain's Queen Elizabeth is finally able to reassure the public about her health, making it making her first official appearance of the year. She stepped out in the English city of Norwich to honor the art and culture of the island of Fiji. The 90-year-old monarch was very ill during the Christmas holidays, but she looks like she's on the mend. Elizabeth II is already Britain's longest reigning monarch. It might be one of the most biggest art projects in Rochester Hills history. Dozens of people working together to create something the entire community can enjoy. This is definitely really something to see. Our Paula Tupman is live this afternoon to show us the huge mural. And this is kind of like a paint for number, but really for all ages, Paula. You know, Karen, you're right. First of all, it is the most biggest. I think it really is. This is how it starts out. So it kind of starts out like this. So as a drawing, they kind of have a template. You see some of the numbers right there. They go to some of these panels over here and then take a look at this. So here is the mural, but this isn't all of it. This is only half of it. That just gives you a sense of how massive this project is. The Rochester Hills community mural is mammoth. 76 five by five foot squares to create a 1800 square foot mural. It's 90 feet long by 20 feet high. And everyone and anyone is invited to reserve a space to immortalize their brush strokes in art. We've had folks from as far away as Wixom and Novi come out. People tell friends and coworkers and, and then they tell um, families. We've had grandchildren drag their grandparents. The mural is sweeping, inclusive with families of all stripes, wildlife of all kinds, and the artists, everyday people with their own special stories to tell. Give your cheese melted, okay? We introduced you to Rising Star Academy when it first opened in Centerline. It's a culinary art school for special needs adults, and they're doing so much to expose their students to the things that enrich their lives. And so it was really great to see some of their young chefs in training put down their stirring spoons for a paintbrush. This is my way to show my artistic side. And so that way when I get out there in the real world, I can show what my talents are. Basically, that's what it's about. It, it expresses your you're, you're artistic, like, like to be creative and stuff. 
our friends at Rising Star and our friends at Woodside Special Needs Sunday School adult class, they are responsible for, I want to say, about 35 panels. I've been lucky enough to paint a few panels. Yeah. When the mural is done, it will grace Rochester College so it can be seen from the Clinton River Trail, all 1,800 square feet of community mural. Well, we have a very beautiful spot down on the back of our campus uh, that students have enjoyed for years since the college was founded in 59. And uh, it's been very isolated. We thought this mural would make a great uh, welcome mat uh, for the park for people to come in and enjoy it like we have for years. I don't know how that's possible. Okay, so take a look. So X marks the spot. This is what they've gotten done. This and this is what they still have to do. They think they've got about three more weeks of painting. They would love everyone to come out, but you just can't show up and paint. You've got to actually register. So if you contact or connect with Rochester College, they can show you how to register. Bring your kids, bring your grandparents, bring your neighbors. This is a community-wide project. They're going to get it up on that building. They're going to cover it with a very special material so it lasts forever for everyone to see, Karen. I really love the idea. Okay, you said all ages. I mean, can you really bring the little kids to help with these murals? Because what if they don't yes. stay in the lines? Is that oh okay? Oh my gosh. Absolutely. Just make sure you got something to clean them up because you know it is pink yes. and they are little kids. That's but they right. want all comers to come out and be part of this community and you don't have to be from this community. I they just like want it. you to come out. This is a great idea. All right. Thank you, Paula, and have a good weekend. Still ahead, first at four, why can't Apple make its iPhones in the U.S.? A former executive talks about the challenges of making smartphones in America. Kimberly. Hi, Karen. Up next, what's happening to young girls between the ages of five and six? Some eye-opening research about a big change when it comes to girls, boys, and intelligence. Mary T coming up all new on Local 4 News at five and six. Interested in seeing trucks with tires the size of humans jumping 35 to 40 feet in the air? Well, I'll tell you exactly where you need to go to see it. In Good Health today, we are talking about when young girls start to see themselves as less talented than boys. And Kimberly Gill joins us. I have to say, this is so disturbing and heartbreaking. It is disturbing, so much so that even the researchers call their results disheartening. So let's just take a look at what they found. Researchers at New York University found that most five-year-old girls had no gender bias when they were asked about intelligence. But just one year later, at the age of six, they're much less likely to associate intelligence with their own gender and they start to avoid activities associated with really smart kids. Researchers suspect parents, teachers, and the media share the blame, but say we all need to be on guard about the messages that we're sending young girls, even at just five years old. So disturbing. It really is, because yeah. they've got the world in front of them, exactly. but they do, they start making start, these stereotypes. Yeah. Yeah. Also, it's been a warmer week, and so we're talking about exercising outdoors, but you definitely need to be prepared, according to doctors. You're right, and, and a lot of it is common <laughs> sense, but it comes down to three things, the right clothes, the right equipment and keeping yourself warm. Doctors at the Cleveland Clinic say it's important to be physically prepared, especially if you're doing a sport that you haven't done in a while. For example, so you should go to a conditioning class to work any muscles related to skiing before you decide to go skiing and hit the slopes. For more general exercise, make sure that you have the right shoes for running, the right tires if you try biking in the winter, and always dress for safety. You want to have the proper equipment so that you're staying warm enough so that you're not exposing especially fingers or in, if it's really cold, exposing your nose for too long and risking having some kind of cold injury to the skin. Yeah, and that doctor also says the most important thing is to keep moving. You should avoid inactivity even when the temperature is cold. I know there's sometimes a tendency to say, oh, it's so cold, I don't want to do can't anything. I can't move. Yeah, but that's... You know what? I got those um, little uh, clippy things you can put on the bottom of your shoes. Oh. Because so many people fall. Slip and fall. Yeah, it's so probably it's like worth good the investment. if you're running a yep. lot, because yep. I know my neighbor fell. And yeah, I don't want to do that. Yeah, it's probably a good investment. Prepared. Yeah. Or go on the treadmill, it's a lot safer, too. <laughs> All right, thank you, Kim. Sure. We are looking at a colder weekend, maybe some snow so let's go to Andrew to get the very latest. Hey Andrew. Hey there Karen. Good Friday afternoon everyone. Yes we're still looking at a few scattered snow showers that are around. You got this larger batch a little bit farther to the north. Bit slippery here downtown but as we learned from last night you know a little bit of snow can cause a huge amount of problems. So you got a glaze forming possibly on roadways. Watch out for slushy or slightly icy conditions especially on ramps, bridges and overpasses. We're looking at those scattered showers here in the city. 
Uh, more concentrated snow or more widespread from KPAC over to Lapeer, Metamora also getting some snowflakes all the way out to Flint. These scattered snow showers will continue because we have this lake effect snow that gets generated to our west and still survives when it travels over us. Currently, we're looking at temperatures around freezing or just a bit above or below. As you can see, the total amounts as we go through tonight and into tomorrow morning, really not that much, maybe a half inch at the most, especially north of eight mile. And we'll see that happen also for tomorrow and Sunday, anywhere from a half inch to an inch each day. Nothing to cancel any plans, but still enough to keep us on our toes, right? We're looking at 31 degrees currently, and it feels like 20 when you factor in the winds. So make sure you want to bundle up as well, not only because of actual temperatures, but because of how windy it is. Later tonight, temperatures fall into the 20s, upper 20s here in town in our metro zone, south of Michigan Avenue in our south zone, same sort of deal, 26 to 28 degrees. Hey, it's Friday night. Get the fireplace going. Whether you're in Novi or other places in our western zone, west of 275, 26 to 28 degrees as well. Same thing in our northern zone, north of Hall Road. Again, if you're going out for dinner, a movie, a show, all three, make sure you uh, be careful out there on the roads and factor on some extra time. As you can see, we hang around the freezing mark, not only for this weekend, but really as we go into next week. So, typical cold type of weather here in Detroit and Southeast Michigan for at least the next week. As you can see, temperatures hanging around the freezing mark across many areas with winds around 9 to 16 miles per hour in many spots. It feels like it's in the teens and low 20s. 18 is what it feels like right now in Ann Arbor. So that's what we need to dress for as we go out for this afternoon and this evening. On the computer models, not really picking up the scattered snow showers as much as one would like, but trust me, there's a pretty good chance of more scattered snow showers being generated. You can see that here for Saturday afternoon, but the same thing is true as we go into Sunday. Monday, there's a better chance of some sunshine coming back. 28 degrees overnight, evening snow, sh snow showers continue, may diminish overnight, sunset is at 542. Now for tomorrow and the next few days, same sort of pattern, lake effect snow being generated to our west, traveling over us for the afternoon, same thing on Sunday. Tomorrow's high around 33 degrees, only about 30 degrees on Sunday. Then as we go into Monday, still cold, but a little bit sunnier, a high of 29. And as you can see, Karen, keep those winter clothes handy and keep uh, a lookout for snow showers in the next Tuesday and Wednesday. Back All right, thank you, Andrew. Well, you probably could have predicted this would happen when McDonald's decided to share its secret sauce. A lot of people are seeing an opportunity to make some cash instead of making a Big Mac at home. Up first, why is iPhone made in China? A former executive talks about why no city in America could handle that job. We'll be right back. Apple has been criticized for making its iPhones in China, but one former executive tells USA Today it doesn't make sense to make the device in America. The executive used to work for Foxconn, the company that manufactures iPhones in China. He says there is no U.S. city that has the infrastructure to support tens of thousands of people working around the clock in specialized facilities. The comments come as President Trump pressures companies to make more goods in America. Well, we told you about this the other day. The story is still trending about McDonald's giving away bottles of its Big Mac secret sauce. Well, now some people are looking to make some money reselling those bottles online. Mickey D's gave away the sauce to promote two new versions of the Big Mac, one bigger, one smaller. Some of the bottles are now selling online. One is listed for $10,000, but most are asking for about 100 bucks. Still a lot of money for a bottle of sauce. Okay, trending Kid Rock. Ticket sales at the Little Caesars Arena. He is officially the opening act for the new venue in downtown Detroit. Well, now they say he's adding two new dates because of overwhelming demand. He'll do two more shows on September 19th and 20th. Those tickets go on sale February 2nd. His opening night and opening night for the arena is September 12th. Still ahead, this is no stupid pet trick. See how this golden retriever delivers a little extra happiness to his neighbors each and every morning. Next. It's not easy putting one of these through there, but Detroit Mercy's Terry Durod was one of the best. I took a lot of jump shots, a thousand jump shots a day. When I started playing, my jumper just was falling and everybody just started loving it. 1,690 points, a trip to the Sweet 16, an NBA career and a ring. I think that's worthy of a Jersey retirement. When you were a kid, who would ever dream this? Dick Vitale called him one of the purest shooters he's ever seen and now Detroit Mercy will honor him. Oh, and he'll give me a few tips too. This winter, 
Finally, first of four, some dogs have trouble learning to roll over, but one golden retriever has become a neighborhood celebrity. Oh, you're so right, Karen. Meet Quincy. This Colorado canine has learned how to deliver the morning paper to everyone on his street. Technically, the paper's already been delivered, but Quincy actually picks them <laughs> up and makes sure that they're right on the neighbor, neighbor's doorsteps. Of course, the neighbors love it, and yes, Quincy gets a treat after every delivery. Fantastic. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us for First at Four. We are back at a half hour with Local 4 News at 5. Sure hope you have a great weekend. Inside Edition is next.